This talk is about uh, total visibility uh, using harness, uh, using Pixie, okay, not harness. Uh, so uh, let's start uh, about me. I am the founder of Cube Cloud. Uh, it is a CMS-based platform on Kubernetes. Uh, second is I'm not an ambassador. <laughs> so unlike many CNCF ambassadors, I'm, I don't have any ambassadorships. Uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, named Tech with Prerith, uh, where I teach Kubernetes to my Indian audience in Hindi language. And uh, the fourth, fourth uh, thing is I am a part-time certificate collector. I have CKA, CKS, multiple 14 in Azure or, and 9 in Google Cloud. So I am a part-time certificate collector. And this talk level is any. So uh, I will be taking from the very basics till the very end. Okay. Uh, so let's look at today's agenda. Uh, first of all, we will look at what is Pixie, right? And why actually, like, why should we even look at Pixie? If, if we have Otel, we have Prometheus, we have Grafana, we have Jagger, why even we should be looking at Pixie? Uh, the second thing is, uh, as the title says, full observability with Pixie. So is one tool enough? Uh, shouldn't we needing five, six, seven, eight tools for observability? Uh, the third will be we will be looking at the architecture, okay, uh, and how Pixie does all that stuff using very minimal footprint and architecture. Uh, the fourth will be live action. We will be doing some live things. Not it, it is not just a theoretical talk. We will be doing some hands-on things uh, in this talk. So, uh, what is the problem? Right uh, in today's agenda, uh, in today's era, uh, it, we all are working in some companies. So, the shift has uh, the workload or the efforts have shifted from developing an application to observing. Okay, uh, around 20% of the time is spent on observing that application. Uh, may it be migrating to a new tool, maybe from developing a new type of collector or migrating to a new collector or maybe just experimenting, developing some POCs. So a lot of time is spent on picking the tools, migrating, then there is some vendor lock in case of some very uh, big uh, observability tools. The problem is, first thing, there are a lot of tools. There are around 20, 25 production ready or the tools that are highly opted by a lot of companies. Uh, second is, uh, in today's era, there is a problem with workload management, right? Uh, there are, it may happen that you are running a lot of applications on, gen, on just one cluster, or it may happen that you are running one or two applications on multiple cl clusters, okay? Uh, the second is infrastructure uh, monitoring, because it may happen that your one cluster is on GKE, your second cluster is on AKS. Uh, and uh, you need to monitor all your infrastructure under one hood. The third one is application traces, right? Uh, just to optimize our application and just to make sure that uh, we are not spending a lot of CPU time and the user time on a particular uh, function or a particular trace. Uh, this uh, next thing is security of the application, right? Uh, because traces are linked to security as well. Uh, the next thing is network flow management because a lot of things happen through network flows. Uh, all uh, Whenever we troubleshoot any application or any outage, first of all, we look at the network flow diagrams. The next thing is troubleshooting, right? Uh, and this tool was specifically designed for troubleshooting. And the last thing is maintaining the SLAs, right? Service level agreements. Uh, so what's the solution? to all these problems. The solution is observability. So all the Oli Club, can I get a oh yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, so in industry, there are many, many solutions. Service mesh, right? Cilium, isovalent, uh, like uh, Cilium is a part of isovalent. So service meshes, right? Next is tracing agents. Next is maybe you are running a VM to monitor the traces, right? Or you are editing the application code for profiling. Uh, there may be some SaaS products, right? And I don't want to name any product, but co some companies charge huge in terms of data ingress, egress. 
and uh, either you have to pay them or you're out of their service. The next thing is the more tools you add to your application, to your observability stack, the more will be the overhead, right? And the more overhead, you, you must ask a question from yourself, is it really needed, right? Uh, it is just observability and either it's for infrastructure or application, it is just observability, that's it. And uh, in case of a startup, like I run a startup, so you need to think about the technical debt, right? Uh, do you have enough funds? When is your next round? <laughs> when are you raising your next round? So, and uh, because we have to pay for developers, then on top of cloud vendors, then observability, then migration and all that thing. So, uh, I asked the question uh, from chat GPT and uh, it returned a lot of tools. These Prometheus, Grafana, Elasticsearch, FluentD, Jagger, Kibana, Sysdig, and like list was about 20. I uh, just picked this one. And uh, I did a poll on my LinkedIn, uh, like how many tools do you use in your production? Uh, so around 35% of the people said they use just one tool and most of them answered Prometheus, that's it, okay. And uh, one, to two, four, one to four tools were Datadog, Splunk, New Relic, and some people even used more than four, like four percent of the people used, nine percent of the people used more than four tools, okay, in production. And uh, this is, uh, I want to ask from you, you just have to scan this QR code and I want to see how, uh, like, what's the count of the observability tools you are using in the production, okay. So just scan, the, okay, uh, let me get back. Just scan this and answer what you, uh, what you are using. Okay, one participant is typing, three are typing. Prometheus, okay. App Insights, okay. Prometheus is the uh, like favorite one. Falco, but Falco is not actually used for uh, observability. Prometheus, Grafana, Grafana, Cystic. Okay, perfect. So, and on LinkedIn also many people were, like 80% of the people answered Prometheus. And we will be seeing at the very end like, will this tool replace Prometheus or you have to maintain both of these tools, right? Uh, okay, some more entries, uh, Dynatrace, okay. So, what if I tell you that you can collect what you need, application and infra level, everything, starting from cluster, node, namespace, pods, service, HTTP data, Redis data, you have to, uh, uh, ingest the database query data, profiling, tracing. And what if, if I tell you, there is not that much overhead to that particular tool, okay? It consumes just 5% of the node's resources as compared to other alternatives, they consume near about 25 to 30% of the node's resources. What if I tell you, it uses eBPF to collect the data? eBPF, if we, uh, we all know that, it is leading, right? It is leading everything in terms of security, observability. It is at the kernel level and it, it does wonders, okay? It has reduced the time by multifolds. Uh, next is all the, what if all the data is collected on the customer ends, no data is sent to the server or the tool side. What if it has a beautiful inbuilt da dashboard, okay? There is no need for integrating uh, Grafana, uh, like in the next stage. What if it is a CNCF sandbox project? What if you can write custom queries and that to in Python, no need to under, uh, learn a different programming language. And yes, the tool is Pixie. Uh, it does all these tasks. And uh, let's understand uh, how it really works. Uh, there are three or four modules. One is PEM, okay. PEM is installed on nodes as a daemon set and it uses eBPF to collect the data. All the heavy load is done by PEMs. Uh, for your betterment, this is the architecture diagram. 
okay uh, pims are installed on the nodes and they do the heavy lifting if you apply the scripts in uh, in the next slides we will we will be looking at what are uh, scripts so pim does all the heavy stuff uh, we have kelvin kelvin is a low level collector okay which collects all the things for, from pims pims actually send the data to kelvin and kelvin then sends data up, upstream okay then we have a visor okay vizier or visor uh, you can call it any any way because it is open source <laughs> so you can call it anything so uh, it manages pims and is responsible for all the queries and is installed on the cluster okay we will be also installing it on a live cluster on a gk cluster for this particular demo and the next is cloud uh, or cli or api you can work with any one of them so this is the architecture so cloud connector is the component which connects your visor to pixie cloud okay pixie cloud is a component which is either you can self manage or it is a open source uh, like platform or a tool that will be open source for lifetime as they say uh, also i forgot to tell you that new relic uh, okay so pixie was acquired by new relic and new relic then donated it to C cncf in 2021 i guess so uh, it has strong integration with uh, new relic but it is open source okay and they claim that this tool will be open source for lifetime uh, so in cloud connector is the component which connects your uh, visor with the pixie cloud pixie cloud is a component to visualize your particular queries and do all that all that visualization stuff all those scripts stuff kelvin is the low level collector and uh, query queue is a component like we uh, we have que uh, queues in all everything right in kubernetes also in internally uh, when it has shared informer and a queue thing okay so queue is basically uh, it will send all the requests to pems okay just to manage load internally to manage the load and to send the request to uh, individual pems so this was the architecture and uh, uh, pros as i told in the introduction cons as of now i have not found any and uh, but uh, there is one con that it stores the data only for 24 hours and because the data it, it, everything is stored on the client side so only 24 hours of data uh, is stored on the node and uh, in order to store uh, more than 24 hours you need to connect external connector with it which will send the data from uh, internally to the external storage and also one more thing it doesn't support logging as of now it supports monitoring tracing profiling but not logging as of yet and uh, adopters uh, uh, new relic is the adopter speed scale verizon and wso2 not to mention the contributors a huge shout out to them uh, i think eight of them are active contributors uh, which are contributing actively and uh, that's the adopter side. Uh, so the next question is, what does it collect? Uh, it collects resource met metrics like CPU memory, network metrics like flow graphs. If you have implemented a network policy, so it will scan that if you can send the uh, bytes or not. It will also collect the P50, P90, P99 latency as well, and it will also collect the cpu profiling we will look at how beautifully it collects cpu profiling by using ebpf they've also tweaked ebpf just to make sure that it consumes less than three percent of the cpu resources on the node and also it collects the protocol like traces okay uh, so the next thing is how actually it is using ebpf so uh, sim simple thing uh, that uh, it supports k probes uh, as of now not any other probes so it will it is just sitting on top of it and it hears in the middle so uh, let me take you to uh, because most of the part is done in uh, profiling thing so it uses uh, bpf perfs instead of bpf maps uh, why because uh, there were three implications during the development of, the, of this particular tool uh, there are symbols if you know in in terms of profiling so they have introduced a uh, cache and then they have replaced bppf perf okay which which has like given them 40% more efficiency than the previous one and uh, 
it 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 works similarly like other ebpf based tools okay and uh, let's go to the next slide okay so the best part about about pixie is that there are ton of out of box policy uh, out of box scripts what are scripts scripts are basically a uh, pre written code that you can easily pick and drop and then run there is no need to write custom collectors then there is no need to write custom metrics everything is already coded you just have to pick uh, and like from the drop down menu you, you just have to pick that particular script we have multiple bpf traces and uh, we also have for for uh, databases redis and other stuff okay and uh, Uh, for your preference this these are all the tables which are managed by pixie in house okay and uh, they are already created by the pixie tool there is no need for you to go into that uh, it also has a, a cli tool uh, named pxl pixie language and it is a valid python uh, it, it can be termed as a subset of pandas i'm not a fa fan of python i am a go guy so uh, i don't understand python that much so uh, this is just another cli tool uh, for kubernetes we have kubectl and for google cloud we have g cloud for pixie we have pxl that's it and uh, we will be running uh, pixie uh, in uh, a cluster in live cluster uh, now it's time for a live action uh, i have created two clusters okay one cluster i am uh, the name is ossna hyphen 2024 hyphen pixie second is add on cluster okay in the ossna cluster i have already created some applications which are running from past 2 3 days and uh, the second one is add on cluster that is brand new i will be installing pixie on it but we will be referring to the ossna one during the matrix part okay so if you don't know about gke no worry it is just a kubernetes cluster let me connect to this uh, let me add a entry to the kube config file using this command and uh, that's it now i need to install pixie i've already uh, okay so before even installing pixie you need to enable a plugin okay auth plugin uh, in uh, gke for in order to apply this particular tool okay okay demo gods okay let it it install meanwhile i will be giving you this is how pixie looks like okay once your data gets loaded everything looks like this uh okay installed now let me uh download uh pixie okay why yes okay so you have to run p pix px auth login just to get the authentication token uh, you have to create an account first okay uh, i already created one uh, so it is free it is totally free either you can log in through google or you can sign up let's enter okay uh, we are authenticated the pixie is doing the work okay and uh, let me go back so now uh, i will be referring to this particular previously created cluster this is how it looks like in the top panel you can see it is oss hyphen na hyphen 2024 hyphen pixie and uh, these are all the applications uh, let me increase the font size and this is the http service map uh, service map just to tell you that this is the thing okay this is how your components are connected this is the call this is the call so there is one interesting fact in, uh, in it as soon as you click on the arrows it will show you the error it will show you the p50 p90 p99 uh, it will show you the error rates and also the direction of the flow and similarly uh, i have a lot of uh, uh, components okay uh, i actually i just googled sample applications for kubernetes and i <laughs> cloned everything so <laughs> so in uh, so th uh, the, on the very top it is the graphical representation uh, as soon as you go down there are particular things for nodes namespaces services it will fetch every single thing you don't have to do any thing 
it will do everything on your on your behalf may it be services may it be pods may it be heat maps okay so let me go back to this particular slide no we are not over yet <laughs> so uh, I will be looking at each of the scripts. Uh, scripts are, as I told you, they are pre-written. Uh, the first thing is I will be looking at the flow of traffic that is by the script net hyphen flow hyphen uh, sorry underscore flow underscore graph. Uh, and let's go to Pixie and scroll above. Here you can see in the script section you just have to type net underscore flow underscore graph. And it will give some error because I'm not chosen the namespace. Uh, for my example, I am going to pick boutique. Uh, okay, so as soon as I type, and here it comes. Okay, it will show the uh, traffic. Uh, here the front end is pinging all these uh, services the card service, the cube DNS service, the ad service. And also, you can similarly play, uh, just uh, click on it, it will show you the bytes sent received and total bytes and uh, in also in terms of load testing it will also demonstrate that there is a load test going on on like just a similar box like this particular boutique hyphen front end similarly a load test will be represented uh, the next script that i am going to show is uh, B there are some bbpf scripts but as of now uh, uh, my applications are not in like <laughs> I installed all the very basic applications so there is no need for BBPF scripts but uh, as soon as you type BPF you can find a lot of scripts you can find for TCP drops uh, socket size and all that thing okay and uh, the next would be the DNS flow graph uh, so DNS I think I have flow graph I have okay I have a, a couple of but they, these are not related to applications okay so uh, a couple of you, you can also look at the DNS graph these are beneficial when you are troubleshooting okay because this application was meant solely meant for troubleshooting uh, and uh, the next uh, script is uh, you can go to clusters okay clusters is a very uh, good one so you can see what is happening in that particular cluster like we saw it before it is the same script but if you want to look at that particular node if uh, here you can see uh, the cpu uses the pod count but if you want to look further into it you just have to click it and it will show you the cpu usage in graphs the bytes read written network traffic sent virtual memory size and all that thing okay and cpu flame graph we will uh, look at uh, at it a little bit later but this is all about it and if you want to go further into that into a particular pod for example checkout service you just need to click it and it will show you every single thing again we have not done anything we have not written any collector we have not written any metrics everything is uh, like pixie is doing every single thing and uh, here you, you can see the where is the inbound outbound traffic metadata and the flame graphs okay uh, this is about networks and uh, mapping the next is infra level, uh, level as i showed you uh, the node thing you just have to type nodes and again uh, i don't remember that particular name so you can look at cpu uses network traffic and all that troubleshooting things okay and it will also show the pod status that it is completed uh, or like terminated state uh, the next thing is three or four good scripts that are pid uh, uh, underscore memory underscore usage and uh, let's go to it and let, let's see pid underscore memory so it will list down all the process IDs along with the virtual memory and average memory size and also the timestamp at which it was uh, created. And also if you, want to see, uh, if you want to see what's written inside that particular script, you just have to enter command E and it will show two types of scripts. One is PXL script, which will define what actually is being uh, like what is the actual metric and which spec will define the visualization that you are seeing okay so but i'm not a python guy <laughs> so i'm not going to code it okay uh, but uh, you can surely try it out on your own uh, 
and pray to demo gods. Uh, and uh, there's also a scratch pad where you can write the script from very scratch. Okay, and uh, the next very good thing is perf flame graph. Okay, uh, let's enter command E to close it. And this is, uh, if you don't know what is flame graph, uh, so uh, it defines, okay, I will come into the profiling part, but this is a fancy graph, a uh, fancy map. Okay, just for now, it is a fancy map. Uh, and next is it also scans for Redis and databases as I told you so you just have to type Redis and it will scan for all those things Redis data and it will scan for all the key offsets and latency involved in that particular thing cool right everything it is doing and uh, so observability was not that difficult anytime the, the all the open source companies came in somebody built something on top of a particular technology and they stacked up over the time uh, yeah for tracing uh, thanks to microservices <laughs> because before microservices tracing was not that a big deal right for when microservice services came in there were a lot of traffic uh, traffic going on between the services and you can observe this by using http underscore data that is already a pre-written script it will give you full body request path a uh, full body request and uh, you can just click on it and look at actually what it is uh, what actually is happening the response code and uh, the size the request method uh, the request parameters okay so every single thing uh, just like your uh, inspect mode right and uh, the next thing is profiling. Uh, profiling is very, very important in terms of observability. It will tell you which portion of your code is uh, like spending a lot of time, okay? And uh, previously what happened was before, I think eight, uh, four years before, I was adding manual code into the application which was doing the profiling thing. And I think most of us were adding a manual code which were, then we had to rebuild that particular application and deploy it. Okay, and uh, this was the traditional way. Then uh, so even some people run a separate VM, which will uh, they will create a tunnel into that particular application, and then it will monitor the thing. Now the things have come to eBPF. Okay, as I told in the beginning, uh, this Pixie tool works on sample uh, sample based profiling. So in some middle of the task it will interrupt the CPU for some seconds it will trigger an eBPF probe and it will collect the stack traces which will eventually uh, like uh, lead to less than 0.3% of the CPU I I think I spoke 3% before but it is 0.3 right and it uses uh, like they did a lot of tweaks they introduced BPPF perfs and the perf buffers and they introduced the cache and all that things uh, so let's uh, now how to see that particular uh, heat map uh, you just have to go to pods okay okay let's go to cluster let's go to cluster then let's go to node and then I will go to that particular pod okay so heat map as you can see okay why it is not here things happen uh, okay okay node okay this is the ad service right okay so here you can see there are a lot of samples collected right and uh, here like if you are a developer and you know he what are heat maps uh, you can easily figure it out what it needs to get done the broader it is uh, the broader it is the more you need to work on it to make sure that it is consuming very less time okay so this was about profiling one more add-on uh, is that you can integrate grafana with pixie Yes, uh, Pixie can work as a data source for uh, Grafana and this is how a new dashboard looks like. Just awesome. You just have to do three things. First is add 
go to the Grafana cloud and add a plugin. You just have to search Pixie plugin and plugin is all already there. Next, you have to create a API key. API key you can create using these commands, uh, P PX API key create, uh, which will create an API key. And then you need a cluster ID. You can just type PX get visors and it will return the things and you can easily integrate Pixie with Grafana. If you, if I want to add uh, more uh, in right now, so let's add some namespace metric, okay. And for example, I want to go for a table, okay. So, so I can add it over here. That's so so simple. And uh, the next thing is, I, I think I forgot to give the uh, the command line. Uh, example okay so you have to type px run the script name for example nodes and i want to store it as a csv format so hyphen o csv then uh, sample uh, or nodes dot csv okay okay i okay i think uh, parameters px run or Could not fetch kubeconfig does not have pixie installed. Okay, so I think uh, we did a little bit of mess up with the clusters. Okay. Just hold a sec because just one hour before it was working. <laughs> okay, I think it's working. If it's taking time, it's working. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> so, uh, what's inside nodes.csv? I just have to type bat cat. Uh, again, you can type only cat. And uh, okay, bat cat is also not there. <laughs> so it will give you the all the uh, data collected. In this way, uh, uh, you can run scripts uh, using the command line, and. Uh, yeah, the next question to uh, from you would be, what about Prometheus then? Actually, a lot of observability tools are dependent on Prometheus as of now. So you can't just just uh, remove Prometheus from a current tech stack. Uh, it it can be there, and but Pixie can also be there because it is free and they are not charging anything from you. It is open source. It is a CNCF sandbox project, and uh, you just you have to do n like no task at all you just have to install pixie on your cluster and that's it it will fetch everything from your behalf so you can first run it as a poc in your staging clusters and then you can push it to production and uh, any questions dear container people yes actually you are not audible Um, so basically, is there, I use like node exporter right now to collect all the host metrics and, you know, uh, and other things. What, is there an overlap between like node exporter provided metrics and what Pixie provides, um, in terms of those base metrics? It seems like they're, they're doing some of the same things, but yeah, they're doing also some... a lot more of other things that I don't think node exporter is covering. Yeah. Uh, so I think you answered yourself for me. So yes. <laughs> so yes, it does more than node, node exporter. Any other questions? Okay, no, everybody is excited to go to text track, right? <laughs> so uh, if you have any doubt, you can reach out to me at my email ID. This is my LinkedIn. I have a blue badge on LinkedIn. <laughs> so uh, next is on uh, Twitter and that's it. Thanks for joining and uh, see you at KubeCon or any other CNCF event.